This is where it really happens. All of you are here today because you want to know more about the business of digital content, of YouTube, of what makes a YouTuber a YouTuber, how they got there, the branding. We're going to go over all of that today. So if you stay throughout this entire day and you listen to all everything said on the panels, you will walk away with more knowledge in this one day than uh, before this one. just online video to mainstream. You're a hit artist on iTunes. You have danced with the stars. You design for Aerosmith style. You have your own line. And what else is there that you can do? Did you set out to be this huge mega star that you are now? Or, or what? Absolutely not. Um, if anyone knows my story and how I got into YouTube, I had no intention of even like 10 people watching my videos. I didn't think anyone would really find interest in them. But I really wanted to do it because it was an awesome distraction for me at the time. I don't know how many of you have experienced bullying, but honestly, I'm sure a lot of you have. I think it's something that a lot of people think only happens to like kids and high schoolers and you know the younger generation, but it even happens to older people in workplaces every day. Some people don't even realize that they're bullying someone. So I was bullied when I was around 12, and. Uh, it was cyberbullying, so it's when like MySpace was still around. Remember those days? Um, so they made like this fake page that said Bethany Mode. It looked just like my profile, but it was different because someone was controlling this. And on all the captions of the photos and like the bio of everything, it was like me making fun of myself, like calling myself fat, calling myself ugly, basically just me making fun of my appearance. And I was 12 at this time. I had never dealt with anything. Like that before so I was like what do I do and it instantly made my confidence just go down the tubes like I felt so insecure and I also didn't really want to talk to anybody I kind of shut like my family out and I shut my friends out um, and that also caused me to start having to deal with anxiety and things like that there was a point where I literally couldn't even go to the mall or go out in public because I was too terrified and it all started from that bullying experience it's just like a domino effect and then one day, I kind of just like, this is how my life is going to be. Like, I'm just going to be sad all the time. I'm not going to love myself. And uh, then one day, I just started watching YouTube videos because I was home all the time and I didn't really want to go anywhere. And I stumbled across a beauty video. And I wasn't really into makeup or beauty things. It was just like a video that I found interesting. And I just thought it was really cool. So then I started watching more YouTube videos and, you know, the fashion beauty community. And it really got my mind off of things. And it really showed me that <clears throat> there can be a positive community online. And it's not all hate. It's not all negativity. Because I, I found this place where all these girls were coming together. And, yeah, they were talking about makeup, which kind of sounds superficial. But there's also this bond there where you're relating about something. And it's positive energy. And I found that really intriguing, and I wanted to be a part of it. This is something I never even expected myself to do. And I instantly fell in love with it, and I didn't do it for views or comments or subscribers. I genuinely loved having a voice. When I was being bullied, I felt like no one went through that, and I was the only one. And then, you know, I've even opened up about the story, and people have left comments telling me about their bullying experiences, and it just makes me so happy that I kind of got into it, even though I got in with a rough start, I turned it into something really amazing. And the least, the least that I can do for you guys for supporting me is inspire you to do something incredible. Whatever it is that might scare you, but you really want to do it, just go for it. 
I was scared to do YouTube, and I'm sitting right here talking to you guys. If I let my fear get in the way of that, I would not be here right now. I'm at Playlist Live, and I'm having so much fun, and I'm just charging my phone. And my camera charger is right over there. Because my camera died. Oops. I'm so excited. I've been having such a good time so far. I've just been doing panels. And I have met some really cool people that I've been watching videos of forever. And I just cannot comprehend how great this weekend is going to be. I'm so happy. I'm so excited. I say I'm so excited all the time, but I mean it 100% every time I say it. I'm so excited. And guys, I'm at Playlist. I'm meeting people and I'm networking and I'm giving my cards out. I'm, I'm very happy. You start by uh, watching YouTube and then all of a sudden you end up on YouTube. If anybody ever told you that YouTube was not a good resume, they just need to really wake up and realize that the times is changing. I'm uh, Trey Carl, you know what I mean? I've uh, vlogged kind of every day for six ish years. I'm excited to meet all you guys. I'll give you some tips and tricks and I'll try to help you guys out. Make what has become a dream of mine a dream of yours too. You're ahead of the curve. If you're making money, on YouTube at all, and you have your AdSense leads and there's money coming in and you're making videos, I think you're ahead of the curve still. Not for long. Like, to me, this is the last year that you're ahead of the curve. Like, it is growing and it's big and it's mainstream. 200 years from now, when aliens look back at what yeah, culture was like today, the most important YouTube channel, other than Shane Cross, <laughs> has potentially even been made. Right. There you could be making it right now. Like, it, this is a You're right here, you're part of it, so be encouraged. So it's an exciting time to be a part of it, regardless of whether uh, you're, you're a creator or you have other talents. It's not like just these big celebrities. It's like there's YouTubers that are way more famous than celebrities. Or, you know, the power of this has taken all that, like the studios, like they don't have the power anymore. Like, we have the power. I feel like there's a demon, big D, what's that word? Demon of the not only do we have the power to create the content and get everybody in the world to watch it, I mean, you can make a video that gets more reviews than any movie that's going to go in the, in the theater. So I think you should make your own things. That's a uh, good trick. Check it out. Come on, you YouTube too plucky. <laughs> the way we should be thinking is we've kind of taken over this content and we can do whatever we want. The same with brands. We don't have to buy, you know, Procter Gamble forever. We can make our own stuff. Sup, Rookie 06 is somebody who got started when YouTube just came out. Didn't really understand the whole branding aspect. It really answers the question of when do you start branding? For our clients, and like, somebody might think they're worth $10,000, but they're worth 1000 or vice versa. They might be worth $10,000 and they're putting themselves at 1000 It's not super great for the market. You know, that's where you really want to be going if you, if you want to be on YouTube. You want to be someone that the brands come directly to and say, you know, this is the channel I, you know, this is the only channel I want to be working with. If you're under a million subscribers, or I think I'll say half a million, like you really should be focusing truly on your content. Um, that's more important because that's the most authentic and important thing for you. And what's important is for everybody sitting in this room to realize that you have options and you have to think about yeah. what is best Absolutely. for you. What are your goals <clears throat> and what team or, or no team is going to help you achieve the goals. One of the things that I always suggest to creators is, is to keep one platform for themselves. Um, so that they have one place that's just for them. That something is private that they use themselves. A lot of people have chosen Snapchat for this. Um, so some people have a private Snapchat and a public Snapchat. I love Snapchat. I think it's the coolest thing in the whole world. But I do think it's important as a creator, as you grow, that you also have certain things that like are just meant for you and your close friends because I think that helps you develop who you are as a human as well. When you have a blog and a YouTube channel, you're going to be really successful because brands are really interested in that and how you define who you are through text and video is really great. I think what makes it your own is the fact that this is kind of why you're doing it and, and and you can you know have another channel dedicated just to a specific thing that you want to focus on and, and make it your own but I think it's really comes down to passion and then everything else is just sort of I need this because it fits the industry. Yeah I, I just think it's important to be really you know 
very authentic with whatever platform you're using. I mean, don't just start Instagram because you want a bunch of followers or, you know, there's a lot of people that go to Vine. You know, there's a lot of YouTubers trying to go to Vine or Vine is trying to go to YouTube because they think they should, um, but they're usually not very good at it. So, you know, you should, you should, you know, you should, you know, definitely try and go to a platform that, you know, suits you and that it actually works for you and just, you know, don't, don't do something just for the, for the sake of it. Uh, keep doing it if you love it. Uh, that's it. I mean, if you don't love doing what you're doing, stop. It's just to stay true to yourself and your vision and don't let other influences move you off of that. I think that speaks volumes when people want to develop what their brand is, is really the tone of their own voice. Have it come from a real place. I think we're all in agreement. We never set out to make any sort of hit shows or anything. Uh, it, it just kind of happens. <laughs> yeah. Except Tom. Uh, and I don't know, I, I think a lot of it just has to do with authenticity and just being you and then I think people latch onto that and they recognize it and then things just start happening and then other words and things, so yeah. I think it's important to have a format. I think a lot of YouTubers find success having, you know, a lot of YouTubers now do that. On Monday I do this, on Wednesday I do this, on Friday I do this. It's really important to make yourself accountable to do the content and your audience likes the expectation of the content. Um, yeah, so I mean it is important, but like a lot of them said, you just you just kind of throw it out there and then you like look at the Fine Brothers, they're the best example of someone who was on YouTube for three or four years making amazing short films, making amazing content, getting moderate views, and then suddenly Kids React came out and boom, yeah. and now they can post anything and it will get a million views. They can do whatever format they want because they found the secret format. So I mean my advice to any YouTuber is just keep trying. Yeah, I think, I think format is, 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 is really, um, really important because people uh, terrify the change. Um, they really are like, you can, we, we're all guilty of this, like you could really love a YouTuber that does like daily news things, but if they put a comedy sketch on that channel, you would just hate it. For no reason, even if it's a good sketch, like everyone would, people just tend to be like, this is not what I subscribe for, right. I am angry about this. So like, sometimes <laughs> you do get a, a format that works, you can't, you, you should, Stick with it. You should still do other things, but like if you have a, if you figured out a series that works, maybe don't change that one up too much. Yes, but I do agree that the best thing to do is to give your audience what they expect and what not not only what they expect, but what they've come to love and what they've come to you for. So, I mean, it, when it comes to it, it's just like if it feels right, I just put it online, no matter what. Channels are becoming channels again, and people are actually starting to using playlists again. And right. I think that's yeah. you're, you're able to do multiple things on the same channel now. Hey guys, so I just got to my hotel room. I'm not staying at the Marriott, but the play, that the playlist, oh my God, I'm so tired. I'm so tired, I'm exhausted. Um, I'm not staying at the Marriott, that playlist is being held at. I'm staying at a hotel just down the road. So I just got here, I got some of my stuff just kind of out, I have my computer out, and I'm just kind of walking around and trying to not be so tired. <laughs> it's only like 7.30 and I'm exhausted. I'm so tired. But this whole week has been really busy for me so I had maybe like a half an hour of sleep last night. So it's like 7.30. I'm in my hotel room and I'm about ready to go to sleep. I got to talk to Shay Carl. I'm meeting him tomorrow so I wasn't too worried about getting like a picture and stuff today. But I met some really cool people and some people I didn't know of before but I know now and I'm gonna go subscribe and I got some business cards out. I'm tired. Can you tell? Look at my eyes. I <laughs> oh, I'm so tired. My eyes look really like. Bleh. Look at my Elsa braid. I look like Elsa, huh? Let it go. Let it go. Uh -huh. This is day one of playlist. I went to pretty much every panel that they had for business day and learned as much as I could about everything that everyone was talking about and I got to network a little bit. I got to talk to a few people and, and, and um, swap information and there's a few people that got my card and were like, I'm totally gonna check you out and I hope they totally check me out. So hi, if that was you who took my card, thank you for taking that and uh, coming to my channel to watch my videos. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, playlist day one is, for me, over. There's still some stuff going on, but I'm exhausted. I need to sleep, so yeah, 
I'm gonna sleep now. Or edit, I guess, maybe. If I can't fall asleep. I'm still kind of in that, like, I'm excited, but I'm tired. And I'm so tired that I kind of have energy now. So, I'm a little delusional, though. Like, I don't know what it was that I was doing earlier, but I, like, had to stop and was like, that is not normal. It was weird. But, yeah. So, playlist has kicked off at a pretty good pretty good place. I'm gonna put uh, the, like, selfies of the people that I met today and got to talk to and chat to at the end of this video. Um, I met Thomas Sanders, uh, Viner. He's freaking awesome. He's so nice. Um, I got to talk to Shay Carl for a couple of minutes. I get to meet him and his family tomorrow, which I cannot believe. I'm so excited. Oh, I met Bethany Moda today, and she was so nice. So, so, so freaking nice. Like, I can't get over how sweet she was. And she talked about her story, which is very similar to mine. Me and her have a very similar, like, life story and, like, things. Like, YouTube was her escape from, like, bullies and stuff when she was, like, in middle school. And that was the same thing for me, except for she went and made videos. I just went and watched them forever. But, um, I'm making videos now. So that's cool. So, yeah. Because they won. Complete. For me, I'm done. I'm gonna go to sleep. I love you guys. And I will see you next time. Bye.